to glorify your name. Father, we pray right now, Lord, a hedge of protection across their mind this year, mighty God. Father, that you'd guard from the wiles of, of the enemy to teach anything that would be contrary to the word of God. Father, that you'd encourage each one of them. Father, the hedge of protection over their physical body. Father, a financial blessing, Lord. Every way that we can bless them, mighty God, through the name of Jesus, we want them to receive that this morning, Lord. That you'd encourage them, mighty God. Father, those that have the light in them, Lord, that you would cause them to be a, a light unto their class, unto their, their peers, mighty God. Father, we, we want to pray that encouragement, mighty God. Guard their minds, guard their thoughts this year, Father. Use them, mighty God. Go with them. And we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. We've got, we've got another couple here I'd like to have stand up. Debbie and Greg want to stand up. <coughs> How, what could I do to embarrass the daylights out of them anyway? <coughs> like just a stand up, Debbie. I know you had a hard night with your mom and everything, but you stand up. And Greg, look at that smile on his face. Look at that nose he's got. He looks like Rudolph, the red nose. You know why? He, for about six hours yesterday, he was on a high lift, painting our flagpole and putting a flag on it. If you guys hadn't noticed, we have a, <coughs> he said he got home from work at 3 o'clock in the morning. He's a truck driver. And at 8 o'clock, he was picking up the lift in, over in um, um, Web City and bringing it over here with his truck full of everything he needs. And he and Debbie, Debbie met him here. And. And they got, the two of them just worked and worked and worked. <clears throat> and it's beautiful. I've got the most beautiful picture on my phone. <laughs> oh, glory is out there. Thank you, guys. They, now, and, and now, now I got to say, I, I thought about this. I think I thought about this when I was sleeping last night. You know, David, King David, no, 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 scratch that. Daniel, Daniel was a man that did things to perfection. He was, he just, he seen something and he went after it. He was just that type of individual. And in the scripture, it talks about everything that Daniel did. And you know, when Greg came in here a few, I don't know, months ago, when his first Sunday, I think it was, and he was sitting right over there where Pastor Gaddy's sitting now, just about in that chair. And when he got down, he said, and of all the things he could have talked about, he says, what's wrong with the flagpole? <laughs> I said, what do you mean? What's wrong with it? It's standing. He said, no flag. It looks not good. He said, what's wrong? And it's bothered him ever since. And he said, I'm going to fix that flagpole. And week after week, he'll say something about, I'm going to get that fixed. I'm going to fix that. And so, and he fixed the flagpole. And, um, and see, that's how we all should be. I mean, he, you know, he just took that. He just took that project and uh, went with it. And as, as believers in Christ, we should all have that idea of perfection and, and getting a job done when you see something that needs it. Go after it and get it done. This is your house. This is a house that you should love, wh whatever it is. And um, or talk about it or bring it up as an idea. We like ideas, don't we, brothers? Yes. So we just, I just... I just say, Lord, bless them for all that that they did. That was a job. <laughs> that's a that's a taller flagpole than what we think. <laughs> I promise you. Anyway, did you guys get prayed over today, or did you just walk in? We're prayed over all the kids from school. It's in school. Can you come over here a little closer? Right? No, right here. You, she's always good to help do anything. In Jesus' name, Father, this year in school, just touch her and bless her. Everything she puts her hand to, Father. Thank you, Lord. You too. Come here. Okay, same thing, Father. This sweetheart, this sister of yours, Lord, whatever she puts her hand to in school, give her remembrance. May she know who she is in her heart. May she lift your name up above other, uh, um, with other young people in her classes. We thank you, Father. Just um, 
Just touch her in every way. Bless her, Father. We thank you. We love her, Father. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Father, we've got another batch of kids come in, Lord. We don't want to exclude them, Lord. Father, for all the kids, again, mighty God, we lift them up. We pray that hedge of protection across their life, their physical body, and their minds, mighty God, that you'd encourage them. Let them be a light, mighty God. Father, in Jesus' name, we lift them up before you, and we thank you for them. In Jesus' name, amen. If the praise team would come up. Brother Rod, you want to give, give Brother Rod a hand? He's always willing to jump up. and uh, I think he done preached back there in that back room this morning. I don't know if he's got much left, but he said he'd play the guitar while we were trying to sing here. So. <laughs> Come on, let's stand up this morning. <clears throat> there is a garment of praise that this world's lacking today that takes away that spirit of heaviness. Put on the garment praise for the spirit of heaviness lift up your voice to god praying in the spirit and with the understanding oh magnify the lord put on the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness lift up your voice to god praying in the spirit and with the understanding Oh, magnify the Lord. Oh, do, Lord, oh, do, Lord, oh, do remember me. Do, Lord, oh, do, Lord, oh, do remember me. Do, Lord, oh, do, Lord, oh, do remember me. Look away beyond the blue. Put on the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. Lift up your voice to God. Praying in the spirit. Oh, magnify the Lord. Well, I got a home in glory land that outshines the sun. I got a home in glory land that outshines the sun. I got a home in glory land that outshines the sun. Look away beyond the blue. Put it on the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. Lift up your voice to God. Praying in the spirit and with the understanding. Oh, magnify the Lord. Well, I took Jesus as my Savior, you take him too. I took Jesus as my Savior, you take him too. I took Jesus as my Savior, you take him too. Look way beyond the blue. Do, Lord, oh, do, Lord, oh, do remember me. Do, Lord, oh, do, Lord, oh, do remember me. Do, Lord. Do, Lord, oh, do remember me. Look away beyond the blue. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How many know we need revival in the church world? In our church, in the church world. And we know who the reviver is. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. You revive me. You revive me, Lord. And all my 
deserts are rivers of joy. You are the treasure I could not afford. So I'll spend myself till I'm empty and poor. All for you, you revive me. Lord, I've seen your goodness, and I know the way you are. You give me eyes to see you in the dark. And your face shines a glory, your only in part. And there is still a longing, a longing in my heart. You revive me, you revive me, Lord. And all my deserts are rivers of joy. You are the treasure that I could not afford. So I'll spend myself till I'm empty and poor all for you you revive me Lord my soul oh Lord is thirsty only you can satisfy you're the well that never will run dry and I'll praise you for the blessing for calling me your friend and in your name I'm lifting I'm lifting up my hand you revive me you revive me Lord and all my deserts are rivers of joy you are the treasure that I could not afford. So I'll spend myself till I'm empty and poor. All for you, you revive me, Lord. I'm alive, I'm alive. You breathe on me, you revive me. I'm alive, I'm alive. You breathe on me, you revive me. Come on. I'm alive, I'm alive. You breathe on me. your spirit mighty God in this house this morning I'm alive I'm alive you breathe on me you revive me you breathe on me you re revive us this morning
that name of Jesus. People, whether they think it or not, they're really wanting somebody to speak the name of Jesus. Speak it into their situation, into their hurt, into their finances, into their family, into their home, into their health. There's power in that name. Thank you, Lord. Jesus. Come on, church. Just speak it this morning. Jesus. 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 There's no other name under heaven given that we could be saved. There's power in the name of Jesus this morning, Lord. We thank you. Thank you, Lord. I just want to speak the name of Jesus. And over every heart and every mind. Think about it, church. Because I know there is peace within your prayer. Thank you, Lord, your presence. I speak Jesus. I just want to speak the name of Jesus Till every dark addiction starts to break Let's declare it Declaring there is hope and there is freedom I speak Jesus Your name is power, your name is healing, your name is life. Break every stronghold, shine through the shadows, burn like a fire. I just want to speak the name of Jesus. Come on, speak it, church. And over fear and all anxiety. To every soul. To every soul held captive by depression. I speak Jesus. Your name is power, your name is healing, your name is life. Break every stronghold, shine through the shadows, burn. Shout Jesus from the mountains and Jesus in the streets. Jesus in the darkness over every enemy. Jesus for my family, I speak the holy name of Jesus. Shout Jesus from the mountains, Jesus in the streets, Jesus in the dark over every enemy. Jesus for my family, I speak the holy name of Jesus.
shout Jesus from the mountain. Come on, church. Jesus in the streets. Jesus in the darkness. Hallelujah. Over every enemy. Jesus for my family. I speak the holy name of Jesus. Your name is power, your name is healing, your name is life. Thank you, Lord. Break every stronghold, shine through the shadows, burn like a fire. I just want to speak the name of Jesus over every heart and every mind. Because I know there is peace within the presence. I speak Jesus. We exalt you this morning, mighty God. You're holy and you're worthy, mighty God. We give you glory and honor, mighty God. We thank you for that name, mighty God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Shout Jesus from the mountain. Jesus in the streets, Jesus in the darkness, over every enemy, Jesus for my family, I speak the holy name, Jesus. Shout Jesus from the mountains, Jesus in the street, Jesus in the darkness, over every enemy. Thank you, Lord. Jesus for my family, I speak the holy name of Jesus. Your name is power, your name is healing, your name is life. Thank you for that name this morning. Go ahead, church, just worship it. Burn like a fire. Thank you, Lord. We worship you this morning, mighty God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Father God, we just thank you and praise you. 
We give you glory and honor. There is none like you. There is no name that is above the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you that you made a way where there was no way. You made a way for us, and you made a way for our families. Father, I just declare in every household in this place, every place that the enemy has come to steal, kill, and destroy, be restored in the name of Jesus, yeah. that those the enemy will have to break every stronghold, break every stronghold that's upon these households, upon these children, upon these cousins, upon these aunts, upon these uncles, any family member across the nation. Father, we speak the name of Jesus. We speak the name of Jesus, and by your spirit, Father, we ask that you draw them. Draw them, Father God, by your spirit into a place that they cannot deny, into a place of forgiveness, a place of repentance, a place of your love, Father, that just overflows them and grabs them and grabs their heart and snatches them out of the fire, that you bring them to a solid ground, a solid place. You plant their feet upon the solid rock of Jesus Christ. And Father, I thank you that no weapon formed against these families will prosper. That's right. That everything that's declared to be of the enemy, you will turn for good. You will turn for their good. We speak life. We speak life into these families in every area. And I thank you for it because you are the giver of life. You are the way, the truth, and the life. And we love you, Lord. We give you glory and honor for what we're going to see in the days to come yes. of your deliverance, yes. of your restoration, yes. of your reconciliation within families where the families are broken. Even within the families, we believe in restoration and reconciliation. We give you glory and honor. In Jesus' name, amen. Shout Jesus from the mountains, Jesus in the streets, Jesus in the darkness over every enemy, and Jesus for my family, Jesus, 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 Jesus. Your name is power, your name is healing, your name is life. Break every strong world, shine through the shadow, burn like a fire. Come on, just worship him, church. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord. We bless your name of Jesus this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Jesus, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 That name will be the greatest name that ever goes across our lips. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, this morning. The greatest thing in all my life will be knowing, serving, loving Him. Hallelujah. We want to know you more this morning, mighty God, by your presence, Lord. In all my life, 
is knowing you. The greatest thing, the greatest thing in all my life is knowing you. In all my life is knowing you. I want to know you more. I want to know you more. The greatest thing in all my life. Is no the greatest thing in all my life is loving you, loving you. The greatest thing in all my life is loving you. I want to love you more. I want to love you more. You're the greatest thing in all my life is love. The greatest thing. In all my life is serving you, serving you. The greatest thing in all my life is serving you, serving you. I want to serve you more. I want to serve. serve you more, mighty God. We want to worship you more, mighty God. We want to praise you more. The greatest thing in all my life is loving you. We love you this morning, mighty God. We thank you, Lord, for your presence, mighty God. Hallelujah. 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 Anyone have a word by the Spirit this morning? Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord. Brother Randy asked if he could just testify for a second. Uh, it takes a little bit for me to get through the emotions of loving the Lord. This week has been a good week. Uh, my son called me on a Wednesday. Wasn't doing too good. Nothing bad. He he was he was promised something on his job and it wasn't delivered to him. Now, Alex has known the Lord. Doesn't attend a church anywhere. Lives up in Kansas City. You know our daughter is over in uh, Nairobi, Kenya right now. And so he stopped at a African store of all stores up in the city somewhere. And as he was walking through, looking at the items there, and, and 
Who knows what he was thinking about? Why would you stop at an African store? Just because your sister's there, I guess. <laughs> so a lady walks up to him, and she says, this is how good our God is. She says, can I pray for you? God told me that you're having troubles on your job. And, he, and she ministered to him in the African store. And then the lady that run the store invited him to come to the Baptist church up there. Now, I don't know that he went yet today, but that's kind of what I'm hoping. But it, well, I guess with, with Brother Dan and Bruce talking about youth today and, and praying for them and that they can keep their spiritual minds sharp while they're going to school and still be able to ward off all the darts, the fiery darts of the devil that try to deceive them and want them to change their mind into being more worldly and, and, and forget about Jesus. You know, that we, can't, we never can give up. And when he called me, To tell me that story, all I could think about was how good my God is. Because even though he's not serving and, and going to church and, and what Christian people do, God still has people watching out for him. We never know. It's everywhere, guys. It's in your family. It's in, it's in everybody's family. And I just thank God today for that. Hallelujah. Don't give up. Don't give up. Welcome the evangelist Rod Perez here this morning. Yes, there would be a release for Children's Church this morning. We are. We're on. Live from Pittsburgh, Kansas. Hallelujah. There's a lot of places we could have been this morning, but thank God we chose to come into the house of God. David says he was happy when he heard, let us go into the house of the Lord. This is a... a place to come, a place of refuge, a place that we can just come together as a family. We can, yes, we can shout, but we also can cry. You know, in these days, it seems to be there's a lot to cry about, but God always has a people. God always has a remnant. God always is in control. Can a brother get an amen? amen. Yes, we just thank you, Jesus. You know, so many times in this time, you, you, if, if you watch the news, if you read the paper, in which, by the way, I try not to watch uh, certain news. We won't be political, maybe. However, the world is looking, or the United States, uh, uh, this is this is our country. This is my country. This is this is this is a country that I love. This is a country that I sh uh, cherish. This is a country. Uh, even though I believe that that for some of us that are our age, brother Gaddy, that that God is raising up pillars in 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 His church in His country. And our job as ministers of the gospel is not to turn the people to the White House, but turn them back into the God House. Can a brother get an amen on that one? Oh, I, I didn't come for a certain church this morning, but I did come for somebody that's in the body of Christ. If you're not in Christ, because there's only two people in this world, whosoever wills and whosoever won't. So if you're not a whosoever will, we will give you an opportunity, and you don't have to be a whosoever won't. So that's a bad decision to stay at whosoever won't. Mm. We, we like preaching John 3.16, but 
Not only does Jesus come to give everlasting life, whosoever believeth in him shall have everlasting life, but the other part of that, Pastor Daddy, we already know there's a perishing in that. Life is real. You know, I, we, we get challenged on uh, not only daily basis, but, uh, you know, I want to lift up the family of Rob Hunt right now. Robbie was a good friend of mine. We played a lot of music together. Uh, recently, we've been playing together at uh, uh, the church that we both uh, attend at Open Door Fellowship, and I've been honored and privileged to play it, uh, even on this stage with Robbie. And my heart hurts when I heard that he perished last, uh, uh, not perished, he passed, uh, that was an improper word. I'll correct myself, sister. He went on to be with the Lord, and we'd always talk before every morning, just like we did this morning, where the praise and worship team would get, and I would sit there and I'd say, let's usher in the angels of heaven. Let's usher in. Let that angelical forces sing right alongside of us. Let us have that Isaiah uh, uh, vision that I see the Lord high and lifted up. I see the Lord in his train fills the temple. I see the Lord in all his majesty. And all of the angels are singing holy, holy, holy. And Rob is not an angel, but he is in the presence of angels singing holy, holy, holy. So when you think about that, you can get excited. When you think about where he's at right now, your sorrows were t of tears were turned into happiness. And just praise God. God always makes a way. I'm done. I'm just messing with you. It's been a while since I've been here, so it's good to see some of you. All of you, I guess, huh? <laughs> Put my foot in my mouth there. Well, some of you look good. <laughs> Others, I... I don't know. Let's go to <laughs> Hallelujah. Let's go to the Lord. Father God, we just want to give you praise, Lord, as Lord, we just without the anointing, Lord, the words spoke today are just a tinkling symbol, a brass. If it's not anointed, Father God, we don't want to hear it. But, Lord, if you've already touched this word, if you've already prepared, Lord, this word, we just want to thank you for your word, Father God. Jesus, you're lifted up. It's all about you, Jesus. Without you, we are nothing. So it's all about you, Jesus. We thank you in Jesus' name. And they all said, amen, amen. Open the word of God this morning to the book of Hosea. Oh. You know, I preached this at a couple of times now. Both times I've been in my home church. But the Lord has spoke to me about this in these days. You know, if being an evangelist, uh, I'm very revival-minded, very revival-minded, very revival-minded. We hear revival going around, you know, other places, other cities, other countries, and I want to see it right now in Pittsburgh, Kansas. I want to see a, a, an outpouring of the Holy Spirit that changes life. I want to see the drug addicts quit drugging. I want to see uh, uh, the working ladies get uh, uh, stay home with their family and, and, and be a productive member of society. I want to see that alcoholic put his alcohol down, and, and I want to see that which is depressed in darkness, see the light of Jesus Christ and the love of God Almighty. That's what I want to see in these days. I, I've, I've been stirred up, and, and, and I have to ask myself, this is what the Lord is speaking this morning. Are you ready for the influx that what God has to bring into his church? Are you ready for it? Can you sit with those? Are you ready for me to quit yet? Yeah, I'm getting started, Brother Gaddy. You really encouraged me. Mm. My pastor here. I, I got saved in the Lighthouse Tabernacle over there. Um, 
comfortable with that. Will you? No, not Fifth Street. Uh, anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Above well, my hearing. You know, not only has the devil been messing with my eyesight with, with dry eye, uh, starting to get elderly. My daughter calls me elderly. I've been labeled in that, in that great class of the elderly class of getting closer to Jesus. I like that, though. Amen. And, and uh, so if I speak a little bit loud, it's the microphone's fault, but I'm encouraged, I'm excited to lift up, to pick up, and let's just exalt Jesus in this place this morning. Amen. Hmm. Book of Hosea, are you there? Chapter 1. Hmm, hmm, hmm. I don't know if you put it up there or not. Do, you want, do, do I need the weight or just let her rip, pay her chip? There it is. The word of the Lord came unto Hosea, the son of Beri, the days of Uzziah, jo- Jotham, Ahaz, and Hezekiah, kings of Judah, in the days of Jeroham, the king of Johash, king of Israel. The beginning, I want you to focus on this. The beginning of the word of the Lord by Hosea. And the Lord said to Hosea, Go, take thee a wife of whoredoms and children of whoredoms, for the land has committed great whoredom, departing from the Lord. So he went and he took Gomer, the daughter of Dibliam, which conceived and bare him a son. You know, we think about this uh, a book of Hosea. Some say it's an allegory. Some say it's a metaphor. But if you cannot take this story about Hosea and his wife named Gomer, if you can't take this literally, you're going to miss the concept of what God is speaking to. It's a God. God is all. Yes, God is a God of judgment. But don't ever underestimate that he is a God of love. He is long-suffering. Some of you need to shout an amen that he's long-suffering because we have tested him sometimes to the limit, but God is always faithful. Woo! Always faithful. He'll never leave you nor forsake you. He's a friend closer than a brother. Mm. What's his name? Mm. Okay. Nobody's asleep yet. We're not, we're not going to give you a, sh- a, a chance to go to sleep this morning. We're going to take a test after it's... I'm just messing. Hosea was a prophet of the northern kingdom in a time of material prosperity, but also in a time of moral decay and spiritual bankruptcy and idolatry. You can sit there and you can sit there and see the the similarities of the nation of Israel in this time where they were serving other gods. They were serving Baal. And uh, uh, if if you study out in the book of Kings with with Ahab and and, uh, Jezebel, how they had started serving Other gods, other strange dog, gods, Baal, and practicing children's sacrifice. Wake up because we have somebody in here uh, has been trying, an organization is cr- trying to infiltrate our city, infiltrate our community, infiltrate our neighborhoods, and set up a place. That will be an abortion clinic. I don't even think I was going to preach on this, but too late I already did. We need to wake up, be strong, and we need to pray this thing out. Because our nation is a nation that has turned away from, not everybody, praise God for that remnant. If you're a remnant, I got good news for you. God is relying on you to show up and to speak up for the kingdom of God. Now is not the time to be passive. Now is not the time to be quiet. Now is the time to be radical because the kingdom of God suffers violence and the violence taketh by force. I've always, uh, uh, I, when I try to think about that, uh, of Lord, what does that mean? Our enemy is violent. He comes to kill, steal, and destroy. We have to be equally as violent, and we have to pray, 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 seek the Lord, go out and talk to people. Above all, we need to love who is unlovable. (sighs) 
<sighs> Following other gods. You know, it's funny that the first thing, we just read this, the first word spoken to Hosea from God was, I want you to go take a wife of har- harlotry. You all know what a harlot is? Has he ever asked you to do something that doesn't make any sense? Has he ever said something to you that's such a hard thing? If personally, uh, uh, I, I don't think I would have... Uh, chose a woman that was either I don't think she was a harlot yet I think that God says she'll become a harlot because for a prophet to marry a, a, a harlot was unlawful in his day but he's still speaking a word I want you to do something that's so hard to do and and we got to realize this is the first thing that God spoke to him and so many of us are stuck because we never get past that hard word God gave us the first word that God gave us we think that it's not for us it is for us and it seems like we just don't go any further in God because we've not done the first hard thing that he's told us to do you're quiet and I like that because you're thinking amen can we get an amen I want you to take a wife of harlotry, and I want you to have children of harlotry. Like I said before, she probably wasn't a harlot yet. Her name was Gomer, but she would become that exactly what God said. Futuristic. She bore him a son named Jezreel, but then she goes off into some other things. She has two other kids. She has a daughter called Lo Romeo, which means not pitied, and another son called Lo and me, which it means not my people and I'm not your God. What a name to have. You're not my people, I'm not your God. I don't want to hear that. And the Lord's speaking about the nation of America that we're not his people and we've turned away and we've served other gods and he's no longer our God. He is our God. We are a, a church that is a Israel backing, Jehovah loving, Jesus praying, crying out, Jesus. There is no other way but through Jesus. Amen? Mm. In chapter 2, I asked the sister, where'd the clock go? Mm. Oh, I'm not worried about it. As a matter of fact, whoever just said don't worry about it, you just told this Doberman to sick him. Mm, I like that. Guess what, pastor? We're not worried about it, are we? Hallelujah. I will be... Kind with your time. It's not really your time, it's God's time. In chapter 2, we see exactly what God had prophesied. He said, I want you to take a wife and I want you to, and I want you to take a wife of harlotry and children of harlotry. And once again, I would not have chosen that combination. However, I wouldn't have chosen me either as a minister of the gospel of Jesus. I'm an ex-drug addict, alcoholic, and came from the streets. I got had so much filth in that lifetime back then, but if it was not for the love of God, I would not be here. I don't know, Pastor Gaddy, how many friends I had lived past that that world of, of a mess, but there's not very many, especially if they're still using. But praise God, one day, one day, one day, one day, somebody from the olden days bought me a Bible. And I opened up that Bible, and I know I'm just like everybody else. We've all opened up that Bible early in our days. We read it, and it didn't make a bit of sense. Sister Donna, one day I opened it up and it said, and it, Jesus says, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No man can come to the Father but by me. 
I had seven years clean and sober through a program for narcotics. I thought I had, I, I, I thought that was enough in my journey, but it was not. When I, uh, when I got that word, the Lord spoke to me, you're clean and sober, but you'll go to hell clean and sober because you don't know my son. That is the word God gave me to get right with him. And guess what? That was over 30, 32 years ago, and I'm still flapping my gums for Jesus. Still. So I know this, that God's no respecter of persons. If he'll use me, saints, I got scars in my arms. If he'll use me, Sister Terry, he'll use anybody. Not to, not to diminish anything, but God is in the glory business. He'll take your story and use it for his glory. He'll take your mess and turn it into a message. Amen? Hey, by the way, for you that growed up in church, thank you. Because, see, everybody thinks you got to have a, you got to come from a life of the streets or, or, or have some kind of, whether you've either been in prison or you've been divorced or you had to bury your dog 25 times. It does, it does you know, it's the old country song. But you know what? Praise God for those that never fell into those temptations. You know, I know that when I came into the kingdom of God and I started fellowshipping around people that had never fell away from the house of God, I was amazed that somebody was strong enough, somebody was solid enough, somebody had that sure foundation of Jesus because at that moment of, lo- of my life, uh, I didn't need a wishy-washy Jesus. I needed a rock solid Jesus and so do you and so do them that are still out there we need to proclaim a rock solid Jesus he is the same yesterday you guys know it don't be afraid the test isn't yet you can still participate Hmm. so here you have the man of God the prophet Now, all of a sudden, his wife has left. His wife went, and she left. But this is sensitive to some. Trust me, this is not a beat-up message. But she left her man. She left her children, and she went out, and she did exactly what God said she would do. She prostituted herself. She became lovers of many. Today, this would be known as a scandal. Top four ministries. Wife has left. Church would be talking. Hey, I got a, a good word for you. Why don't instead of we talk about other people behind our, their backs, about what's going on? Pastor Daddy used to say that it always got in me about being full, a uh, church being full of fruit inspectors. How many times have you heard this man say that? Oh, yeah, many. Are we praying for them or are we just going to talk about them? Okay, moving right along. Preach on. Are we done? Am I out of time? No, I don't have a watch. You don't have a watch. Ha <laughs> ha! Hallelujah. The Bible says in chapter 2, she pursued her lovers, but they could not fill the void. I don't know about you, but I know when I pursued that lifestyle of drugs and alcohol, by the way, I just didn't wake up and just start doing this as a little bitty baby. I made some terrible choices at an early age, and I can't blame the times that I was living in. I just blame it on the fact that I just made some terrible mistakes mistakes because I had was not rooted and grounded as a child in the word of God I just wasn't we went to church but it was a just something you did ceremony so to speak that had no foundational truths ever embedded in me 
I do know one thing. 15 years I spent as a drug addict and alcoholic, and it never could fill that void in my heart. Never could it fill that void in my heart. Here you have Gomer pursuing her lovers, but they could not fulfill that piece of her heart that only God could fill. If you've ever been in that place where you're seeking other things other than God, if you're looking, if, if, if you're looking at anything other, if you're making that statement, Jesus, are you the one or do we look for another? We cannot make that statement because nothing else will fill that void that's in, your, in, that's in your heart except the Word of God and the presence of God and Jesus himself. That is the only thing that seriously completes us is the Word of God. That's it. A drug can't do it. A program can't do it. A counselor can't do it except the wonderful counselor. Woof. We're only on page three, so <laughs> they used her. They threw her aside to the next lover. Talk about a brokenness. Talk about if this doesn't stir up what people, what the church people would talk about. Can you believe the prophet's wife? Can you believe what's going on? I heard she took up business with this person. I heard that she's over here doing it. I heard she's over there drunker than a skunk. I heard she's over there cooking meth. I heard. Hmm. Now you got quiet. Sin uses us, and then it throws us away. There is a wage for sin, Brother Jake. What is it? I never realized at 14 years old on that first time. Actually, I didn't even start with drugs and alcohol. I started at a Boy Scout camp smoking grapevine. Now, I don't even think you can, like, catch a buzz on that, but that's not the point. It was that spirit of rebellion that it was something that I couldn't tell my parents. And if it's something you can't tell your parents, it's probably wrong. All the parents said amen. All that came later. Now all of a sudden, here you got a woman that's been stripped of her dignity. She's stripped naked. The Bible says that God would in uncover her in front of her lovers, and that's exactly what sin does. There's only pleasure, sister, in sin for a season. I found that out my own life. It was fun at first until all of a sudden I had friends that would overdose. I had friends that would not live through these these things. I had people that were murdered in bad drug deals. I've had friends. You know, I didn't. I wasn't a weekend warrior, so to speak. I come from the depth of the street, the depth of hell, but that's why I preach the way I preach because I also want to preach about the depth of heaven and the love of God. It has no boundaries. Mm. He'll reach down in that miry clay and he'll scoop you up and set your feet from the pit to a platform. Thank you. I hope Alex Jones is listening to this this morning. We on tape? Send it to my daughter, too, will you? They're cousins, by the way. The Joneses, and I, well, that's another story. Hey, I've already admitted it, so we're both. We're both there. You know, when you got a nation... It's turned away from God. It's easy for that person to sit there and say, everybody's doing it. I might as well do it too. Guess what? Everybody's not doing it. The house of God is filling up as we speak. The house of God is, God always makes a way. 
a sanctuary. You know, they, they, uh, you hear these governments talk about a sanctuary city. You know, we don't need a sanctuary city. We need a sanctuary of the house of God. That's it. Welcome home. If you don't have a church, get one quickly. Time's running out. You think it's going to get better? Read your Bible. Chapter 3. Right on time. Then the Lord said unto me, I want you still to picture that Hosea is out full swing in rebellion. Full swing. A mess. Full swing out there. Then the Lord said unto me, Go yet, love a woman, beloved of her friend, yet an adulteress, according to the love of the Lord toward the children of Israel who looked to other gods and loved flagons of wine. So I bought her to me for 15 pieces of silver in a homer of barley and a half a, a homer and a half of barley. Notice of what the Lord said again. Now that he's already gained God's trust, remember he said, go marry a harlot, and it was a hard thing to do. But because he was obedient to the first hard word. Now God is ready to give him another word. Now he's given, it's another hard word. But because you did the first word, I got another word for you. I want you to go. I want you to go get her. I want you to go. I want you to go. I want you to go again. Could you go again? Would you go again? That broke your heart. Could you do that? Could you go after society, which we've labeled derelicts? Could you go after that? We're trying to fill this place up, and guess what? God's not interested in how many people are on the registry. He is interested in how many people are being added daily to the kingdom of God. That's what God wants. Will you fill up the seats, not for the church, but for the kingdom of God? What about the addict, the alcoholic? Can you go for them? Would you go for them? We have a clinic that's trying to open its doors, but we're fighting it tooth and nail. What about that woman that's made a decision? She's listened to the lie of the enemy to have an abortion. Could you go after that woman? What about the man that paid for it? What about the man that talked her into it? What about, oh, come on, don't be so holy in here. You think it's a one-sided story. It's never a one-sided story. Somebody had talked that woman into making a very bad choice in her life that would affect her life the rest of her life. If it was not for the love of God, they would be lost in that torment forever. Could you go after that person? Could you love those that you know? You know, when it says, I want you to go yet and love a woman beloved of her friend, yet an adulteress. Can you love that which may not ever love you back? What do you get out of it? Are we quiet for a reason or are we just quiet? Could you love them knowing their intentions were never to love you but to love another? When the Lord spoke this into my spirit, I wept. Because you would think about this time that love has its limits, Pastor Gaddy. Surely, God, you have your limits. Surely, God. My question for you today is what are your limits? Who's that one have you've already determined that you can't reach because of their past? Do you have a limit? Is there somebody that just, the, uh, whatever they have done in their past, you just can't reach out to it because of what they've done? And we have our limits. Uh, Jesus has drawn a line in the sand. He says, I don't want your limits. I am a limitless God. 
We don't need limits. We need abundance. Can you go out and reach that which nobody else can reach? If you can, I got news for you. It's called revival. If you can't, we'll diminish. We'll, we'll, we'll get to a point to where we're just mediocre in the words of God, but we'll have a form of, godly, form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. We need a church full of power, and that only comes from Jesus and the love of God. That's the only place it comes from, is the love of God. We don't have a magic wand out there to hit somebody over the head and say, be a well. But Jesus has a touch from the throne of God that he can reach down and he can take that coal off the altar of God and place it upon their lives and they'll be changed forever and ever. It's all about Jesus and only about Jesus. Yeah. I'm going to get to the heart of the word right now. Notice in verse 2. The Bible says that I bought her to me for 15 pieces of silver and a homer of barley and a half homer of barley. The next time Hosea sees Gomer is at the slave auction. She's stripped naked, which is exactly what God said would happen. I'll set you in front naked in front of all your lovers. You'll be exposed. You won't be able to hide anything. Your sin will be brought forth, and you'll have to deal with it. So now she's at a place to where she's literally stripped naked at an auction block at the bid of the highest bidder. What do you think that neighborhood looked like? You think the bankers lived there? The doctors lived there? The lawyers lived there? The business owners lived there? You just think maybe the meth head, the crack head, the derelict of society. Maybe they're the ones that lived in those neighborhoods that nobody else wants to go to. Maybe they're the one. That's where they live. Can you go there? What do you think it looked like? What do you think it smelled like? What kind of stench does that have? <laughs> it's not like I don't know what I'm talking about. I've been in some of the darkest places that you can even imagine. And then if I ever told you the depths, you would not have believed it because I remember the first time over at a Believer's Bible Church and I gave my, uh, uh, I don't know how full the testimony was, but I remember a man named Larry Beasley who was one of these pillars of the community that I talk about that never strayed away from the house of God. And he came up to me uh, later on. He goes, I could not have imagined you in that state. And I thought about that, and isn't that really the glory of God when he can take that that's an addict, that's an alcoholic, a derelict of society, a womanizing man who lived, who, 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 who would trade relationships for the next high, and all of a sudden God reached down? That's about the glory of God right there. I have been... In those neighborhoods. Death was rampant. The stench was horrible. Our hearts were hardened. Here's a question I got to ask you. What do you. How do you think she reacted when she looked up? Saw her husband standing there. What do, you, what, do you, what do you think she's going through? What do you think she's feeling about this time? Shame, guilt, condemnation. Come on, you, some of you know exactly what I'm talking about. Probably got her head down. Mm. The Lord says, I want you to buy back. Buy her back for 15 pieces of silver. And a barley and a, and a, and a homer and a half of barley. The barley was... The price of a slave was 15 pieces of silver, but the barley in the Old Testament was for the sin of adultery. 
an offering for the sin of adultery. Combined together, as estimated together, this would be a price of about 30 pieces of silver. Mm. I hope that didn't go over your head, about 30 pieces of silver. Because I'm going somewhere with this. He says, I want you to go back, and I want you to buy back. You're thinking, why would I buy back something I've already had, something that's belonged to me, but she wanted all. Our, our, our feeble mind would say, uh, she's made her bed, and now lie in it. And but that's not the love of God. I want you to buy it back. So here you have Gomer, head down, totally naked, stripped naked for everybody to see. She looks up and she, all of a sudden, she hears a sound that she recognizes. The sound of a bid of her husband. Because her husband had to outbid everybody else. Other people would have bid. Maybe they would have thought, well, she's not worth 15 pieces of silver. But Hosea says, the love of God says, I'll pay that and more. She heard a voice. She looked up and she sees this man of God standing there. That's the love of God. That's the love of God, to go beyond your limitations. Hosea had to outbid the others. It sounds a whole lot like God paying the price for our sins. We think about the cross. You know, when, uh, the Bible says that God commended his love towards us and while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. You know, I think about that when I can identify that, that when I was still a sinner, when I was still putting stuff into my arms and my veins, into my lungs and into my body, God still paid that price for me to get right. God still saw something in me and loved me so much that he was willing to get upon a cross and pay that price. God paid a price. He bought me back. He bought you back out of the price of sin. God paid the price. You couldn't pay it, but he could, and he used his son to do it. You know, when you picture, when you picture Jesus upon that cross, that's just the end of the torment that he would have went through. Son of a living God who came from heaven. They plucked his beard. They smacked him around. They placed a corner, uh, a crown of thorns upon his head. By the way, you know, part of the curse was thorns and thistles in the garden. Now you see God on the move, making a reversal of that curse. He's putting that curse upon Jesus' head. He was spit on. I can take a lot of things, Brother Dan, but I don't know if I can still stick and move like I used to 35 years ago, but if you spit on me, we're going to find out. Amen? Anybody else in here just being real? <laughs> okay, I see some hands back there. Yeah, you get it. Me too, I'm right there with you. <laughs> they take this man who knew no sin, he became sin, that we might be made to call the righteousness of God in Christ. He became, he paid that price as they nailed him to the cross, as he's in that gruesome death. He's sitting there and they're all mocking him, they're all jeering him. He's placed between two thieves, and they're even giving him a hard time. Jesus, if you're the son of God, get yourself down, and while you're at it, get us with you. 
They're mocking him. And all of a sudden, Jesus makes this statement. After five or six hours upon that cross, I'm not sure how many. He looks up. He makes a statement of all statements, which I believe changed one man's opinion, so to speak, of who Jesus was. Forgive them, Father, for they know not what they do. That thief on the cross heard that. Now all of a sudden Jesus hears a voice. It was the voice of that other thief that says, remember me. When you enter into your kingdom. Remember me. When you enter in, Jesus says, I'll do better than that. I'm going to take you with me. (sighs) My Bible and your Bible tells us that we are the Holy Ghost which is in you. You're not your own, but you're bought with a price. What was the price? It was the cross. You're redeemed by the blood of the Lamb and you're no longer a servant to sin, but a servant to God. Nothing can separate us from the love of God. And he that knew no sin became sin that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. When I think about John three sixteen, for God so loved the world, he gave his, his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. We've got to get back as a church preaching about the perish part of three 16. It is a good place for those whosoever believes in him shall not perish. But what about the whosoever wills? I said before, and the whosoever won't. The whosoever wants will perish. It becomes real. You got wayward sons and daughters out there, grandkids. I got good news for you. God's on the throne. He hasn't forgot his covenant that he's made with you and your family. You and your household will be saved. He will make a way. That encourages me today. You know, Jesus came from heaven, and he thought it not robbery to be equal with God. He made himself of no reputation. It's just like go, go, love, and buy back. Jesus, I need you to go. Need to go to earth. Make yourself of no reputation. Took on the form of a servant. I want you to love. I want you to tell people that I'm a God of love. And the Bible says that he humbled himself and became obedient to death, even the death of the cross. He brought back what belonged to the Father. God had to outbid the devil. And he used his only begotten son to do that. God saw so much value in you that he had to outbid the devil. The Bible declares if if the devil of this world would have only known, if he only would have known, he wouldn't have crucified. What's that? The Lord of glory. The presence of God has come. The presence of God is sitting upon his church today. The presence of God is coming into people's lives and transforming them before our very lives. And he's looking for us to be the message. He's looking for us not to be a, a, he's looking for us to be a messenger. Let me get it right. Not the message. The message is Jesus loves you so much that he died for your sins. That's the message. God loves you. Can you go out? Can you be a mouthpiece? You want your church full? You want to see revival? Have you ever thought about this? Revival. It's been a while since my favorite revival was a Brownsville revival in Pensacola, Florida. You know what? It was a revival of repentance. And God is speaking that today. I preach this at the Lighthouse Sunday night. Repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. God's still preaching that today. He's still speaking that today. Repent. 
Some of us think, what do we have to repent from? How about a little bit of unforgiveness? You know what? I'm about ready to shut this thing off. Some of you in here today, first things first. 